Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can solve linear optimization problems with integer decision rattles. That's actually the difference to the unit before. If you usually go with linear optimization problems, you assume that the decision rattles, while non-negative, are real numbers, so they can take any values. And well, in some cases it also makes sense. So if I run this problem here, I see I get an integer solution directly. So in this case it works perfectly fine. But now imagine I'm changing the requirements at this point. So now it takes not 3 but 3.5 units in context of constraint 2. I solve this and now I see the problem. He tells me to produce 100 33.33 units of good one. Well, obviously this is not possible. The problem also is if I just round this down and this up, not necessarily does this have to work. Here in this example, if I do it like this, I can directly see this point. I will not observe this constraint. So this will be a problem, just rounding this up and down. So what I have to do instead is actually solve this problem as an integer optimization problem. And this can easily be done. The advantage is here I already have everything entered. So if I want to transform this real valued problem into an integer problem, I just go to constraints and I add one constraint and that is on the left, I select all my decision rivals. And then in the middle, where I select the type of constraints, I'm going down here. And then I have two possibilities. The int actually means I have integers. So whole number inputs. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. And the bin means I have binary inputs. So 0 or 1. And well, here actually want to have integer inputs. So that's basically all I have to do. Select this and here he directly says they are to be integers. So I click OK. And this condition is added as a constraint. So he will find a solution where both of them are integers. Click Solve. And you see here, that's my solution. And as compared to what I did, he actually rounded the first one up and a second down. So not always is the intuitive solution actually the optimal solution. However, it's an easy way to also solve relatively complex optimization problems. Well, why relatively complex? Well, I can go back here, click OK, and then I can get an answer report. If I compare this with the answer report from the unrestricted problem, here I only had to solve three sub-problems. Took roughly 0.05 seconds. If I go to the answer report 2, takes a bit longer and, well, I only have one iteration and two sub-problems, but this could also have been way longer. So here I have an actually pretty um, lucky to, that he found the optimal solution really fast. But this could also take quite a long time, especially if I have more than just two variables. However, the output here can be read in a, read in a similar fashion. So profit, this value, the two goods, how much I should produce, here the final values, and my constraints, and it tells me here which of the constraints is binding. So only the first one. Second one is not binding. Here I have a buffer of 1. Third one also not binding. Here I have a buffer of 114. So I can interpret the answer reports in a similar fashion as with unrestricted or with real valued optimization problems. So that's a really neat, really easy way to also solve integer problems in Excel. And well, this already then concludes this unit. So I hope you enjoyed listening to it. And if you want to see more, either on the mathematical optimization in Excel 
or on working with Excel in general, feel free to visit the rest of this course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.